Okay, so hi everyone. Good morning. Uh, I hope no one else is joining. We have full. So I gave you uh, one task uh, last Friday about creating some of the fields, making them mandatory and you know non-mandatory. Uh, have anyone done that or any questions regarding that? Making some of the fields mandatory. Yes, Guru, I have done that. Okay. Any questions you have or any uh, problems you faced during that? Oh, no, Guru. Okay, about the second one, which was making the assigned to field mandatory when state was having some different conditions. Mm -hmm. So, is that also done? Yeah, uh, using the UA policy, I have done that. Okay. Yeah, is there an, any other way we can do that, uh, Gauro? Like, I wanted to ask that. I mean, using UI policies, we have done. I have done. Yeah, there are actually a lot of different ways uh, you can make things work. But yeah, the best approach is the UI policy only. Yeah. And so can, can any one of you show uh, your configuration? Let's say starting with UI policy only. Uh, can anyone show? Okay, I am sharing this. Okay. Uh, let me wait. Let me allow you to share. Yeah, now you can share. Uh, it's still accessible, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, I make it that fields you told uh, mandatory have made the mandatory fields. And here, if we make the instant new, it is not un closed. Closed. It should mandatory. It yeah. Progress. Other other than new and cancel, it should become mandatory and everything. If it yeah. is new, when I click new, it it's not mandatory. Mm -hmm. Cancelled, it is not mandatory. When I click uh, resolve or anything, it should yes. be mandatory, right? Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the other thing uh, that we can work on is let me now share my screen. Uh, I hope you guys can see it. Uh, so we're on incident form. Uh, okay. So the ask was to create uh, some of the fields mandatory and one field which is assigned to based on some condition which says if the state is not new or cancelled, it should become mandatory. That means it should be becoming mandatory for in progress on whole resolve and everything. So the quick thing you could have done is, uh, yeah, you can configure the dictionary and you can see, okay, I can just go and make this thing mandatory, but there was a condition. The condition was the same thing uh, to apply that thing. So if you directly make this mandatory, so the main concern uh, I had was, uh, see this field is coming from task table. So let me now explain you one thing. Yeah, uh, for this condition, it was UI policy and you guys have done it correctly, uh, but there are other things uh, we can, tend to see and apply and we have to be careful whenever we're making something mandatory. So the base table in service now is, is task table. So any table that is created, let's say incident problem and change, everything is, you know, coming or extending its fields and all of these, you know, behavior from the parent table, which is task table. So task table is the parent table for every other and others like incident, problem, change, configuration, and all these things, are uh, these, these are extending the task table. 
let me show you uh, what I actually mean by this. So if you go back, uh, let's say if you open task dot list with a similar way dot list, we can now open any of these things and we'll look for any of the thing that is starting with task. So we will open one task actually. So this is one task. This is the task table. This is a core table of service now or the base table we can say and you can see it is having all of the fields number having assigned to configuration item active, you know, priority state and some short descriptions, description work notes and all of these things. So initially everything started with a task table. Everything in service now is actually a task and whenever we tend to create tables let's say we created uh, these people created incident application and, and problem and change everything they created uh, they usually what they do is uh, they don't tend to go and create every field on their own they try to you know inherit the fields they extend a table which is a task table so that uh, the work is actually minimal for them so uh, it brings all of the pre-created fields which task table have let's say number it has category subcategory configuration item it has uh, all these state and priority short description description so these are the things uh, that are there present in the task table and we tend to you know inherit them so while doing any of the changes let's say you know making some things mandatory and non-mandatory you'll have to be careful uh, whether that particular field is coming from a task table or not. Uh, let's say I try to, you know, uh, let's say I try to make this thing um, pantry field, which we created, uh, try to make pantry field as mandatory. So I can just go directly, right click configuration, configure field and configure dictionary and click on this mandatory. What it will do is, this pantry field is limited to incident table only. So whenever it becomes mandatory, it will only be limited to the incident table. So if I make this mandatory, it will do nothing. Uh, it will make this particular field mandatory because this is on incident table and we're good to go. We can directly go and click on this mandatory checkbox and it will be helpful. If you go back, you can see now pantry is actually mandatory because this was actually created on incident table but if you try to look and create some of the fields which are extended from the task table let's say let's say configuration item if you try to configure the dictionary of this field configuration item you will have to look at it carefully uh, that which table it is actually coming from so we configured it from incident table but you see whenever when we click configure it is showing us the name of the table as task so what will happen is when you will now make this configuration item field mandatory uh, on the task, which was actually on the task tables and, and do a save, what will happen is it will make it mandatory on all of the tables, incident, problem, change, task and everything. So we made a configuration item mandatory, right? And now if you refresh this task table, this will also be becoming mandatory on this one. So this is not required because we were supposed to work only on incident table and now we're impacting every other table also. So let me go back and, and show you what I'm actually saying. If you look at problem table, let's say problem new and this new problem form is opened. You will see configuration item is also mandatory right now over here in problem table. And if you look at change table, create new change and you will see this CI configuration item is now also mandatory for change table. Let me just go and create a new one. Let's say a normal change. You see configuration item became mandatory on this form also, but this was not supposed to happen because we were only working on incident form. We made one field uh, mandatory on incident form, but it impacted every other field. So this is incident form. If we'll give it a refresh, it will now become mandatory. So this is not required. So you'll have to be careful uh, on, let's say on any of the field, you're making some changes like making it mandatory or read only or you know display or active or inactive something, which table it is actually coming from. Yeah, we configured it. We saw it, it was present on incident table. 
but it is actually getting inherited from task table because task table is the parent table for uh, all of these. Uh, it is the it is the base table, and all other tables are actually inheriting it. So whatever changes you make on task table fields, it will be you know uh, set down to all the child tables that are actually uh, you know inheriting that. So if you configure go back and configure table let me show you if you configure the whole incident table configure uh, let's say let's say configure table this incident table we're trying to configure making some change we see that the table is actually incident but it extends the table task so all of the fields that are there on task table will also be you know coming in this incident table so that's why we'll have to be very careful whenever we are trying to make some things mandatory non-mandatory and now uh, we've made that thing uh, inactive right we've unchecked that mandatory box if you now refresh task it will be becoming uh, non-mandatory if you now refresh change it the ci will also become non-mandatory so the thing is now what should we do actually to you know make our uh, anyway we are in that mandatory right i wanted to ask you one question uh, like how can we make that uh, uh, star uh, red color like for few yeah. fields it is here yeah so let's say for few fields you say uh, you're seeing um, it is yes. black colored and for few fields it is red color it is okay. just because that that particular thing is not yet selected or the, there is no value into it so if you now select one value in pantry it will now become black okay. anything any mandatory field which is empty it will show you in red yeah this is empty please fill this and if it has some value it will turn out to be black okay. so uh, we were seeing uh, what should we do actually. So, so if I come up to you that, okay, uh, everyone, please make this configuration item field or make this assigned to field, which are actually coming from incident table. So call, uh, which are actually coming from task table to make this make this field only mandatory on task uh, on incident table and not on other tables. So what you can actually do for this? Uh, initially, we tend to go configure dictionary of this and making it mandatory. Uh, but this will not work because this will impact the task table. So if it is impacting task table, it will further impact all other, you know, extended tables. So that is not a way. Uh, what we'll have to do is we'll actually have to override the dictionary. So this concept is very much necessary. And this will be asked every time in the interview or almost 90% of the time dictionary override will be asked. So if you're working on incident table, someone asked you to do changes on some of the fields. It should not impact other fields, uh, which it extends the fields from. Let's say it is coming from task table or problem table or change table. It should only be, you know, related to that thing, that table only. Let's say incident table you're working on. So to make that thing mandatory only on incident table and not impact other table, you'll have to do dictionary override. And in dictionary override, there is one. Uh, what do you say one entry uh, of incident so if you click on this incident table now i want to do what i want to override the mandatory field only on the incident form i will don't want to impact other task tables other problem change and all other tables that are actually you know extending that task table so the application is global base table is task you see and the current table we're working on incident table and the column name is this uh, cmdb ci which is actually a configuration item field override the reference qualifier we can override uh, what else do we want to override i want to override the mandatory right override read only override display value and you can uh, override other things also when you override mandatory and make it mandatory uh, and do a save what you will see is now this configuration item field became mandatory only on incident form and not on other forms let's say problem i open problem also one tab opened incident one tab open problem so you see on problem table configuration item is not mandatory but on this table incident table it is now mandatory why because we have written one dictionary override entry Dictionary override is saying it is coming from base table. You are impacting incident table and overriding the mandatory thing, the mandatory functionality. And if you try to open some other table, let's say we're trying to go on basic task table only. 
and look for so all of these are actually tasks see you've opened task list but change is also a task incident is also a task problem is also a task let's say prb uh, number starts with prb problem is also a task and task itself is a task so if you open one task record it is not mandatory on change it is not mandatory on task and it is also not mandatory it is mandatory on incident it is not mandatory on problem so we have overrided this functionality and we've made it available only on incident table so this thing is very much important please uh, look at this thing carefully whenever you're trying to make something mandatory on one form try to make sure it is not impacting other forms how you will make sure you will see what table you're actually impacting on or if it, if that field is written on task table please try to use dictionary override so coming on this incident form if i want to make summary as mandatory or read only or any other thing i can just directly configure dictionary i can see okay this is only impacting on written on incident table i'm good i can directly make it mandatory right because i will not be impacting other tables i will only be impacting incident table so this is one thing you'll have to keep in mind every time you try to make something mandatory not mandatory or read only give me a second any questions onto this <clears throat> okay so yeah you might have done it uh very well and making assign to field as mandatory on basis of a state value. I'm just quickly trying to show you how you can actually do that. Configure, configure the UI policies and you can just click on a new and quickly write one UI policy which says make assign to field mandatory on some conditions. Okay, it's very slow today. So the filter that you'll have to apply is the condition is when state is not one of new and canceled. And what you'll have to do is you'll have to save this one. So this now creates our UI policy. We'll have to create one UI policy action to actually implement. So we have put up the condition. We have said uh, that state is not one of these two. Oops. Ah, it actually selected one only. Let me now select both of them. Um, state is not one of new and canceled. Yeah. We have new selected and we have canceled selected. Yeah. And now you have to write one UI policy action, which you can say, uh, make this particular field, which is assigned to. And you see, this is only impacting on this particular incident table. It will fetch you the fields of the incident table. And you can just go find assigned to and make this guy as mandatory true. So uh, try to Okay, mm. how UI policy basically works is uh, UI policy makes fields mandatory, read only, and visible. So UI policy is very much used for this thing, making some fields mandatory, read only, and visible. Uh, you don't have to write only any for, script. Uh, only for these three. Uh... Only for these three. And and yeah, one more thing is clearing the value. You can also clear the value whenever you want to. But these are the major three things your policy is used for. You can write the script in client policy, uh, client script. Uh, but whenever or wherever possible, please try to work with configuration only, and don't uh or resist yourself to actually writing some of the script until or unless it is very much uh, you know necessary. If you find any option, if you find two options, writing a script and doing it with configuration, try to go with configuration only. You know, selecting the options and making these things. 
there is no need of going and writing a script uh, because there might be a possibility of making errors. So try to go with configuration. One thing is, you see this red icon over here in this UI policy action. This red icon, why it is coming? Because possibly there is another thing uh, or another UI policy that is written on this assigned to field, uh, which is already there active and working. So let me just try and let's first of all, uh, look at the incident table and try to uh, make our changes when the field was not new or not that guy which means in progress or on hold this should become mandatory yes uh, that red dot was coming possibly some of the ui policy also working on the same field uh, getting collided uh, so what is happening is let's say uh, filter by updated yeah this is mine and you see make assignment group and all of these things have many of the fields have a same order which is 100 that means they're running at the same time order is the order of running a particular uh, ui policy or a client script in which order you want to actually make them work so smallest is the one which will actually you know allow you to uh, work instantly or in the number one so from smaller to bigger it is the first one and the last one that will be executed first or executed last uh, so let's now try to make a change into the order. You can make changes uh, with any number, uh, whichever comes in your mind, but try to change the orders in, you know, multiples of 100 because uh, it will be very much useful for you in future to put up other things in between that order. Let's say I, I make an order of uh, 250 for this guy. So uh, I changed the order. I made it 250. So one fee, one UI policy is running on order 100, another is running on 200, one is running on 250, right? Uh, so if you now look at uh, that particular red thing, it will now be removed probably. Go back to the dictionary entry. UI policy, if I now open the UI policy, on the UI policy action, I will not see that red icon now because I have changed the orders and others were collided with that particular order. So we are over here. Let it load. Yeah, we don't see it right now. So that's how the orders actually work. Why we are giving it in multiples? Because let's say uh, your business asks you to create five more uh, UI policies or scripts that should be, you know, working after this one. So you have a space of actually providing it with a number of uh, 230. Let's so if you did not give any order, it will take uh, order by default? By default, it will take 100. Yeah. So uh, oh, so in that order only, it will run the... Yes, policy. correct. Okay. Yeah, you can also give it orders in 1, 2, 3, 4 like this, but uh, there will not be any further scope to, you know, let's say uh, one script is running on order 1 and other, sc other script is running on order 2. Uh, let's say order 2. Now, uh, uh, someone asks you to please uh, add one more script which should be running in this in between this. So there is no no space uh, at all left. You cannot give it as order 1.5. So that's why we tend to go with hundreds, right? Hundreds and 200s and 300s. So, so that anything can come up. First will run that uh, our... hundred. Okay. Yeah. After that first it will be... run hundreds, all the hundreds will be run. Then it will go for next order 200, 300, 400. Now first this 10 will be running. So yes. smallest will run first and the largest will run later. So this is one order thing. And we have uh, shown dictionary override also. And 